now to Solo Flawless at Prophecy Dungeon during the Season of the Hunt. The uh, Beyond Light DLC. For those that just want to see this and skip the time on the screen, press me, I can detail my weapons and all that stuff. Before I go, in, go into anything, first you need to, stay, need to know that um, the Triumphs can still be obtained for this dungeon. So if you solo flawless, the, the Triumph will come up at the end saying you've done it. Obviously it won't for me because I already done it last season. Okay? So I've already got those Triumphs. But the thing is, this Triumph is classed as a Legacy Triumph, which is in this section here, but you can't view it. You can view these, but you can't view these, right? So, that also, I don't know whether this is intentional or not. Obviously, it's intentional because it is technically a legacy triumph, but it's in the game now. It's kind of weird. But the thing is, last season, everyone was chasing this dungeon. Not everyone, people who wanted to, was chasing the dungeon for the reward. Because of the emblem that you got to um, show, you know, that you'd done something in the game. Which is a good idea, you know, if someone's playing PvP, you see them with the emblem on, you know what they've done. You see them in the tower, you know what they've done. You see them, you know, wherever you see them. So then you know then, eh? But, it states now, the source, the collections states for me, source, Season of Arrivals Dungeon. Which leads me to believe that this is an intentional thing, because a lot of people were saying, oh, it's a bug, right? It's a bug, um, the emblem's going to come back. But they've actually someone's wrote that in there. That can't be a bug. So this is intentional. They wanted it just to be an emblem for the season it came out, which is bad in my books. Because you can go and do Pit of Heresy this season, get an emblem if you haven't got it. You can do you can do Shattered Throne, get an emblem if you haven't got it. This is a bad thing for me because <clears throat> not a lot of people. There's no incentive to do this solo flawless. You may as well just do it in a team and get your pinnacle drop. The thing is, if you really want the triumph. Um, and people don't believe it, at least you can say, well, I actually got the triumph. Um, but it, it's it's really bad that you actually can't earn this uh, emblem. Because this um, this is technically harder to do this season than it was last season. Since there's no take on mods now. So, uh, that I'll just get that out of the way. You can't get this emblem. And it, they may change it. They need to. They need to look at doing that. This, uh, this, season, this emblem... To be earnable at any point, someone who buy, picks up the game, they're a new light player, they buy the new expansion, like get into Destiny, it's like, what can I do solo? Oh, I can do this. It's putting people off, and they don't want to put people off. But stop doing exclusive things like this, they need to change it. In terms of our loadout, so on a Warlock, it's going to be easiest on a Warlock or a Hunter. Titan runs the hardest, but this video is focusing on a Warlock. Classes that we use, we end up using Devour Warlock. At a point, or for a lot of it. We also used Well of Radiance and Top Tree Dawnblade. I'll talk more about the Pacifics in the run itself. My setup was generally the same. Uh, we had a highest recover stat so that we get, you know, the higher recover if we haven't got you know, Devoured Up or something. We also get Healing Rifts more often. Higher dis Discipline. They, these are the two stats I care about the most. Okay, I'm not really caring about anything else. Just those two stats. Mods that you want to bring, I didn't change my mods in terms of the end mod so much. I did change my weapon perks though, depending on what I'm using. I'm using several different loadouts at different points. So I end up changing those in the run, you'll see, as I'm going. But we want a high energy fire, a charged up, which means we get an additional stack of charge of light. We also have a global reach, a taken charge, and a wrath of Rasputin. We've got two builds going on in the build, if you like. We've got the Charge of Light stuff. So we get Charge of Light off Orbs of Light. We can get up to three. Three stacks. The Global Reach and the Wrath of Rasputin takes care of War Mine Cells. Which, that in turn means you need to bring weapons to cater for that. We've also got the Exotic Gauntlets and Necrotic Grip on. Which is um, top tier for this dungeon because of how the dungeon has been changed with the Scions. This... Exotic can help you out with that. In terms of weapons, so we bring in Fawn because we're bringing Necrotic Grip. For those who don't know, Fawn does what Necrotic Grip does for its melee but at range. So it's very powerful now in PvE. So we're bringing that. Other kinetic weapons that we're bringing is Mountaintop and Wiverhood. Uh, Wiverhood with Catalyst as well, which gives you Auto Loan Holster, so you want that on there. Mountaintop. Um, 
can be bought from the tower vendor for 2 ascendant shards, 250 glimmer, 250 shards, and a couple of prisms. So anyone can go and pick up the mountaintop from the uh, legacy vendor thing. Yeah. Also, be sure to utilize taken spec. I forgot when running this dungeon, I totally forgot the taken specs in the game. So make sure you run rock taken spec on all your weapons. In terms of our energy weapons, we were using the Truth Teller with blinding grenades on. We also have Spike on it, but we were using it mainly for the um, blinding grenades. Then we had, in terms of energy weapons, I Class SMG with the Warmind Cells. If you want to use a different cell weapon, you can. These are the two here. Just whichever cell weapon's best to you, use it. Make sure it's masterworked, of course. We're using this one. In terms of heavy weapons, we're using a Fallen Guillotine with Relentless Strikes while we're in Blade. I brought a Machine Gun for, to use that briefly. And the main heavy weapon is Interference. So this has Spike Grenades and Autoload and Holster. If you have those two key components on your Grain Launcher, you can pair this with Wither Hod, meaning that both your weapons reload, those cell, uh, reload themselves and you swap between the two, which you see in the run itself. If you don't have an Autoload and uh, Grain Launcher, like a legendary one, then you can use Wendigo. Wendigo is capped to 1060, but the dungeon is 1060 power. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Um, you can use Sunset Weapons is what I'm trying to tell you. Okay? Power level is capped at the activity that you do for damage. So you can literally, you could literally use Recluse if you wanted to, but I don't see any benefit using Recluse. Um, a Warmind Cell Weapons is going to do you way better than what that would, or any other sort of primary that you can think of. But well, other than that, that was the setup. So, with this run we're going to detail moment to moment with gameplay, what we're doing at each point and why we're doing it. This first section you can easily skip it. You can kill two knights, get a moat, get, get, get the moat, bank it at the first boss and then start the boss off with less banks to do. Thing is, I'm not going to bother doing that, so I'm just, but I will do the skip. Just showing you here with uh, Top Tree Dawnblade and doing the Icarus Dash plus Sword. You can get up here pretty easy, even if you screw up like I did. If not, you can come in with more ammo. Pick up some ammo from the public event. Come here, you got more sword ammo just in case you do miss your jumps. We'll proc a, um, a Heat Rises grenade and jump over. Then we're going to swap to Well of Radiance. This is the actual first boss, if you like. The loadout is as you saw, so we're using the Exotic Hand Cannon Fawn with Necrotic Grip. A Blind and Nade Truth Teller, which is huge for this boss. Since we're not going Devour, we need to prioritize staying alive. Obviously, we haven't got Devour on well. So, this setup works out really well. The reason for that is, since this dungeon has come back, they've done us some fixes. The dungeon's different to what it used to be. It, I mean, it's the same thing, right? But it's just harder. Uh, now, what's harder about it is because of the silence. The knights feel the same, maybe actually neutered a little bit. They don't rush you as much as they used to. But in turn, they've buffed the silence. Uh, their spawn rate. So the silence are the priority. Anytime there's a wave of silence, which there's a wave of silence every dunk. This never used to work like this on this boss fight. On this boss fight, it used to be a wave of science, two waves of science, and that's it. No more. So, I would suggest that, obviously, you're going to play it passively. You know, try and take out all the science. So, we're using Fawn here. Fawn will actually delay their um, multipl multiplying as well. And Truth Teller. Truth Teller will delay the sounds from copying themselves, multiplying. You can even stick some fawn shots on the boss and the bot because the sounds stick to the boss, it spreads to the sounds. And as you can see the sounds aren't a problem. I'm barely taking in much damage at all. The truth teller is blinding the knights. I'm literally safe to do what I want. This makes this boss fight so easy. This is this loadout that I'm using right now is done on my second go. So my first go uh, on the warlock like first time having a solo on the dungeon this season I got literally to Echo Kel on the final phase and died in the hell room for those who'll know what that means 
I literally died on the hell room due to bad positioning by me. But on my second go, I got it. So this loadout, as you see here, works out really well. I could have used this loadout for the whole dungeon. That's how good it is. I don't, though. I end up swapping. Um, but literally, you could use Fawn, Necrotic Grip, Truth Teller, for the whole thing. Especially with my roll, because I have spike grenades on it. So, I can use blinding grenades for the knights when I come to DPS. I can just um, stick on Truth Teller and do that. The thing is, though, when you have Fawn on, it's not the best DPS. Uh, unless you're using a sword. So, that's a thing. But, there is ways and means which we might do a, an updated run. But, as you can see here, we're just prioritizing our health. Anytime there's three knights up like that, we're using our nade. We say, when, when, as you notice, I'm not using my nade much because that's our, um, our get out of jail card, if you like. If we, um, you know, we, we get screwed over, we're weak, we can just instantly, you know, get full health back. So that's invaluable to have. You don't, you don't need to be using your nade anyways. You use your weapons and truth tell it to do the work. So, just seeing how many banks we need left, we need one da one more dark after this. You can get two uh, dunks at once. I just uh, missed my first dunk. I only got one of them rather than two. Uh, but you can't, all you need to do is be in the middle of both and very high up. That's the tip on that, which I do advise trying to get double bank because of the, ne the new spawn rate for the sounds. Try and get a double bank if you can. It, it, it'll speed it up a little bit. But we're just going to keep blinding them with Truth Teller. As you can see, the corruption spreading between all the ads. Um, it's also worth, if you've got three knights up and Scions, it's actually worth clearing one or two knights. Uh, even if you're out of position, even if you don't need those mutts, just clear them out, get them out. Because when you've got Scions up and knights, it's a little bit chaotic. So for the final dunk, make sure you save a top dunk. Why is that? Well, because it positions the boss into a good spot to use a well of radiance on, because that's what we're going to do right now. So I'm ducking, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for him to do his shield blast. He's done his shield blast. Then I'll jump in the air, do a well. And then we can just literally use our fawn guillotine. I could have utilized a charge of light. I could have used lucent blade, but you don't need it. Um... Fawn Guillotine got nerfed, but it's still very strong. It still might be the best legendary sword in the game. It's not the best sword in the game, but it's the best legendary sword in the game. Um, I would say. I am tested that, but I would I would more than likely say. But Well Reigns overrides the immunity of the goblins. So uh, that's pretty much the first boss. Now, I would say that's intentional that Well does override because I'll tell you why. Because all supers override immunity. Um, immunity as in, you know, when a ad tethers another ad or an anti-barrier champion tethers chunks and stuff like that. All supers override that stuff. So it's probably intentional. Oh, however, B Bubble doesn't, which is interesting. Maybe they've done that to balance it, I don't know. But now we've switched our load up, we took off the sword, we've put on a machine gun, we've kept Fawn on. Uh, and we've switched to a shotgun. Truth Teller's not needed for this bit. Truth Teller would get in the way a little bit. Um, so we're not using that. So for this section, we can take out the blights from a distance, as you see. This is why I've kept it on. Uh, now, this has always been a thing. Um, but I'm just showing it, to be honest, in the video. Um, not everyone will be aware. Um, I'm not saying that this is the fastest method. It definitely isn't. There's other weapons uh, like Bastion or the um, Void Sword, the Void Exotic Sword that can take out the Blights really quickly. Anarchy can. Obviously, it's a no-brainer to use Anarchy. I'm still not using Anarchy until more people get it. Uh, and then I'll check the numbers of how many people actually have it in-game. I think it's still a rare gun, but more people are going to get it when the spoils of... Um, when they keep farming the chest solo. Um... Eventually, more and more people are going to have it. And by that point, everyone's going to be using it. Because it's still the best weapon in the game. We're pretty weak and low on health here. I advise that you take out the snipers first. Not the blights. So you'll be best off doing it like this. Take out the three snipers with your machine gun. Or if you want to put a long range weapon on. A long range primary you can. 
Snipers first, then the blades. You don't need to clear the odds. The only reason why I had a little bit of risk there was because of me not playing, you know, safe enough. So I always take snipers first, then blades. But overall, this loadout is a safe one to do. Uh, you shouldn't be wiping at this part. If you're wiping at this part, you're doing something wrong. This is, you know, one of the easiest parts. But it's easy to be caught off guard, of course. In terms of the dungeon itself right now, how it feels, um, it doesn't feel too bad. I feel kind of tanky with concussive, double concussive. On my first run, I'd done one concussive and then a reserve perk for whatever weapon I'm using. I didn't feel as tanky with that, so that extra concussive does help out massively. So I strongly, strongly recommend double concussive because it's more important to stay alive. It's more important to stay alive and get it done rather than uh, worrying about ammo so much. Your ammo finders are going to help out massively anyway, so make sure you be putting them on and scavengers. That, that's the thing though, you see, because the concussive damage is only exclusive to the chest player. We used to be able to use five, now we only can use two maximum, which is a way of balancing it. They've done that on purpose. Pick out some of these ads. If we get a soul devourer as well, we can get yellow numbers on the blights, which is kind of nice as well. Overall, it's a fantastic exotic, and like I said, I could have used it for the full thing. Um, but this is showing you the absolute best loadouts. And I'm not saying it is the best loadout, but uh, I would say it would definitely work well at Echo Kel. The problem would be damage. Damage wouldn't be very good. Um, you could, I suppose, use Fawn, Blind and Near Truth Teller that you can swap to Spike when you get a boss damage, and then probably a Heavy Grenade Launcher because Sword is more risky now than what it used to be when you saw an Echo Kel. And why is that? Well, the reason for that is because no take on barrier. I haven't actually tested sword damage or swords in general on this on Echo Kel yet. So I can't say 100%. I know I've seen any footage of solo play using a sword on him. Um, that's something I might have a look into. But now we'll just finish off the last set of blights. We're getting a lot of damage taken off the invisible minotaur and stuff. This is another thing you can do. You can stand on top of the blights like this. You're not completely safe. You used to be. But now the ads seem to hit you here, so it's not a safe zone anymore, which is interesting to me. But you can stand on top of there, definitely, if you've got a healing roof. I could use my well, uh, which I didn't, to be honest. I don't know why. <clears throat> of course, we've got the shotgun on, which we, you can use as well, just to melt down the blight. Any shotgun will do you. I mean... I'm just using first and last out because this is a shotgun that I had on me. But anyone, any shotgun would have done. And that's the last set of blades, I believe. And then, obviously, Toland, the orb. If you're new to this dungeon, will show you the way. I won't be detailing the mechanics so much. This is this is more a video to somebody who already sort of knows the mechanics of how the dungeon works. But once extra tips on positioning, weapons to use, subclass loadouts more about that and what to do and when to do it so in the cube room <clears throat> the cube room isn't as bad as I thought it would be um, the there's no signs in this room which is a good thing uh, it's acolytes and they, they don't feel that threatening especially with the loadout that I'm gonna put on so we're gonna swap to devour that's bottom tree void walker we're gonna swap to mountaintop with the Aikolos SMG and Xenophage. This is where our cell build's gonna come in. Of course, my cell, I haven't been using cell weapons, so I wasn't taking advantage of that, but now we are. Okay. So I'm gonna switch all my weapon perks to what I'm actually using. So I've got an SMG loader on, a grenade launcher loader on. Um, I'll put all the, you know, the perks to match. And obviously my cell build and stuff. Now, I could have used a kinetic sniper, instead of the mountaintop, but like I said, because of how easy mountaintop is to actually get, it's actually handy to use this weapon because it saves up a on ammo for Xenophase. So we're swapping to Xenophase, the exotic machine gun, which is probably the best weapon for this room, without doubt. We'll proc our devour, we'll look up in the air to see what we what mods we need. We can use mountaintop, 
hard clear and our SMG. So depending on how I feel, I like to do a mountain top sometimes and then SMG. The mountain top has been nerfed in terms of blast radius, so as you saw there, I'm using it on ads and it's not clearing them all out if it's not direct hit. So it is noticeable, but on a direct hit, it's still sort of like pretty strong. So it was light that we needed. Make sure we're fullish health. We're avoiding the snipers. If you're lower, if you're low on health, and if you think you're going to get a dunk, but you're going to get double sniped and killed, then proc a devour in between. While you're holding the moat, you can actually proc a devour. Okay. So I actually, I actually had a devour handy, as a, you know, as a way of, as a means of surviving it. But as you can see, I can survive three or four snipes from. Um, as, a, like, as you saw from the snipes itself, the enemies. Same thing, for every room we pop a devour straight away. Sometimes if you take a cell out, it'll take both snipers out, which it did uh, for me. Good. I believe we need dark. So three or four Xenophase shots each. Get that, we can pick up any heavy. Just double checking which... Um, which dunk we need. Another thing with this is <clears throat> the way the ad spawns work is this. So you'll have six acolytes spawn on each floor. That um, phase of ads is infinite. Even when the room is complete, it's an infinite wave of acolytes, which is six acolytes. They can spawn eyes, which is six acolytes. Um, Three each corner. Then you've got the two waves of snipers above, which that's just two. But trigger for getting a knight is a sniper. But when you kill a sniper, you get a knight. When you kill a knight, you get a sniper. And that's infinite. The more you go on with that. So what you can do when you've cleared both knights down and you have um, your modes on the floor. Before picking up all moats, because obviously when you pick up all moats, you can't use your weapons. Uh, you can take, quickly take out one or two of the snipers, then get a dunk. Then you're going to end up having one or two knights chasing you. If you find that's easier, rather than getting sniped, then you can do that. But good positioning means you can generally avoid the snipers anyways, like so. As long as you know the rooms and the cover, you can generally get away with it. I, I don't take out the snipers. Once I've got my moats, I let the snipers spawn in and I'm not bothered. Also, if you're low on heavy, you can farm up heavy on each room. So I'm lowish on heavy, so I'm taking my chances. There's a spawn that's come up. I'm like, okay, I'll quickly kill them because it's no problem to do that. Never get any heavy bricks. I didn't. Oh, this is where the mountain top will come in. So if you were to run out of heavy, mountain top could do what Xenophage does, but just a little bit slower because obviously you've got to get all the reloads. Which is why we went heavy, uh, we went grenade launch reload rather than heavy grenade launch. Uh, rather than heavy reloader. Which actually, I think they've removed that now. To be honest with you. Actually, that's not a perk anymore. Rather than LMG loader anyways, at the least. Mountaintop, probably, it would have two-shot the knights. But, like I said, I forgot about the taken spec. So that's a very, very powerful weapon. The fact that it can two-shot a knight. Very powerful. I just uh, totally forgot that uh, Taken Spec was in the game. Since they've removed these Taken uh, mods, well, they haven't removed them, but they've removed them for everything. I, I totally forgot that, like, I disregarded Taken Spec entirely. Yeah, I just kind of find it, I find it weird we can use Taken Spec, but we can't use Taken Armors in anything but last week. It just, it just seems weird to me. I'm not getting a lot of melees here, but obviously, um, I just kept necrotic grip on, just, you know. Uh, it's, it's not a big deal about what exotic you use, really. Devour's doing the work. Um, and even if we do get a, a devour kill via our melee, you know, that corruption's going to spread to all the ads. So it's, it's still useful, even if we're not using one. Right, in a bad position here. And I was getting sniped quite a bit, so we procced a devour up. One of the snipers wasn't killed, which I realize we get that one. 
not a lot of light in this room, which is why we're taking a little bit longer. Fine. Now, what's happened here is, if you see from this room, is that I took a little bit longer there. Obviously, you timed. This is why the interface is so good, because you can't really take your time in this room. Because, as I said, the acolytes are on a infinite wave. So they're on a timer. Um, so if we don't take out all the snipers and the two knights time, while you're fighting knights and snipers, you might get a wave of acolytes. That's why the devourer right in this room and Xenophage is very good. Now you can utilize something like Weller Radiance with Phoenix Protocol. The problem with that is, is if you Weller Radiance in the middle, all the ads will hide, right? Depending on what room you are. Depend depending on what room you're in. So Devour is always the best choice in my books. Now we're on the final room. You'll know that when you have um, two but the two Centurions spawning. We can overbomb one and then we'll Xenophage the other. Pretty simple with that. And that's it done. Now we're going to get our loot and then swap to top tree Dawnblade. Equip a sword, why not? Just because of the uh, movement of top tree Dawn. Helps out with the jump puzzle. I mean, you can sparrow all the way there, but I, I take the jumping route, which we'll see. You can also sparrow fly as well, which I do not recommend to somebody new trying to get the soul flowers. This is not a speed run. This isn't uh, runs competing for the times and all that stuff. Um, this is more a run for how do you do it? Just simply how you do it. I'm not bothered if you do it in 19 minutes, 18 minutes, 25 minutes. How do you do it easily without no fuss? Like I said, this was my second go, literally my second go at it this season. So, in my books, this is this is probably the best loadout, if not up there with Night Soccer Bottom Tree. We'll do a hunter run as well throughout the season, depending on how well this video does. Just depends on how much interest there is. There's, there might not be a lot of interest because that emblem's not available, but we'll see. Which is disappointing for, for someone like me because that's my main content. You know, the dungeons and stuff, making videos on that. And the fact that you can't, people can't get the emblem, it just discourages the whole thing. They, well, what's the point in this? Because it's one of the best things in the in the game, in my books. One of the best pieces of content that they've ever made. Um, so, it's just, it's, just, it's just one little thing they need to do. All they need to do is... Make that emblem obtainable again. All they need to do. So there's two different ways you can go. You can sparrow all the way down, or you can do the, you can take like little mini shortcuts. Um, I like to go this way. It's it's just routine, but just make sure you, whatever you do, don't die at this park. If, if you're gonna lose the solar flaws to the jump puzzle, then that's on you generally. Unless there's a bug where a phalanx can push you off map and stuff. I've seen clips of that. Magically, a phalanx appears on them and then pushes them off map. Things like things like that can happen, but it hasn't happened to myself. And um, that's another thing. If you do get pushed off map randomly, you've got a you've got Icarus dash and you've got a sword to swipe back on map if needed. So not much to this bit, I see, I can see, just sparrowing past this section. There's a couple of snipers at this part, and it is a little risk, I guess, if you... There's a, there's a small chance you might get sniped off your sparrow here. So, what you can do is just take out these snipers here. You're going to see how bad the uh, mountaintop's been nerfed. The, generally, the, that would clear that sniper, and it didn't. So... It's just the blast radius of it's been nerfed itself. Which is even more to the point that Weaver Horde, for me, is one of the best energy grenade launchers in the game, if not the best. Um, obviously, Truth Teller Blinding Grenades is so useful as I showed earlier. But um, if you don't have Anarchy, then literally this is the best, next best thing in the game, without a doubt. Which we'll be swapping to, obviously, for the next boss fight. So we're going to... When we get to this part where there's the knight, we're going to run past the knight. Be careful, there's a lot of ads there. Take this route here. So whichever route that you're most comfortable with. If, you, if you're more comfortable just doing the sparrow, just do that. Do yourself. Now you can make a really long jump at this part if you proc heat rises. Um... I'm going to do it now. You can literally jump down to the bottom. 
easily enough. Just be careful at this section where the phalanxes spawn. The phalanxes, they seem random. Sometimes they can spawn on different um, pads. Be careful of which pad the phalanx spawns on. Like I said, they can knock you off. I've seen footage of it. It hasn't happened to myself, but it can happen. And this is all about... For each encounter, the way I go about it is... What are the chances of somebody wiping on this? And if there's a high chance of somebody wiping on this, on a certain encounter, then I won't do it. Like, for example, the sword. There's probably a high chance that someone's going to wipe because of the sword on Echo Kel. Just because he starts to, you know, teleport you and he might teleport you off the map. Then that's the full, that's 30, 40 minutes wasted because you're using a sword. When all you could have done is easily just put on a grain launcher, a heavy grain launcher, because it's from range, it's more safe. So there's a higher chance of the, of you getting killed. But well, like I said, I haven't done any testing. We'd sword on Echo Kel to see how consistent sword is. Especially with Lament, you, you, you get heals off Lament. So I haven't tried, you know, a double concussive l Lament on the boss to see what that's like. But it may well be an option. So now we're on to the final boss fight. Obviously we're going to swap our load out again. So we're going to swap to... If our Warlock boss with um, Excited Grain Launcher with a Horde and then the Icolos SMG, what I was using earlier, and the Heavy Grain Launcher Interference with Spike Grenades and Auto Load and Holster. So the beauty of this loadout is it works for Ad Clear and it works for boss damage. You can, get, you can get a comfortable three phase off, even two phase if you get everything right. You can actually two phase on the loadout that I'm using, which I've actually seen people fail a two phase with Anarchy Mountaintop. This loadout can compete with that and you can two phase it. If you get your charge of lights sorted out and everything. But this is a comfortable three phase as well. Um, so it manages the sounds, it manages the nights, it manages the rooms and it manages DPS. So it ticks all the boxes. Whereas a sword, it ticks the box for I clear all that stuff. But we've got no taken armor. So if you're using your sword on all the adds, you've got no sword, you've got no DPS or um, Echo Kel. And you need, you need to have that. That's where Weaverhood comes in because special ammo is more consistent to drop than heavy ammo. But not only that, Grenade Launcher Ammo Finder works for both Heavy and Special, as we use it too. So, even more consistent that way. So obviously we started with a Devour, straight off the bat. We're going for Light Motes first, I believe. A little weak, so we're going to use a little bit of Heavy there, just to quickly take him out, because I missed a couple of hard shots on him. The, th the first thing you want to do is try to take out all the um, plants. The Cell will do that, generally. The cell will take them all out. If I was over, that's fine. We've got a, another nade for that. We'll do a Weaver Horde shot and a Healing Rift right here. One Weaver Horde shot and then have Igolos equipped. That will then uh, let the game register. Say that you're, you're due a cell. So say you do a Weaver Horde shot on a bunch of enemies. A bunch of Scions. And that's five Scions. You'd guarantee a cell there. As long as you, you do the shot, swap to Igolos straight away. Uh, and then you're gonna you're gonna be getting cells all the time, and it makes ag clear uh, a lot easier. So we get our five. We got our five at a weird moment, to be honest, but it's fine. Our movement was there. We also got a kill there by doing our dunk, which was interesting. I just noticed that from watching it. That was good, so we, uh, doing our devour. Still got devour going. Good. Get this. Uh, Ogre, which is a guaranteed cell, because he's an ultra. So, if you do, this is the thing about this build. Uh, if you do get a wave of scions, which are an infinite wave of scions, while defeating an ogre, then that's fine, because you can get the cell to then explode, and it takes out all the scions. We're using our movement to our advantage here. We were taking a lot of fire, but as you can see, the double concussive just helps out. Massively. You can also get Necrotic Grip on there. Speed that kill up. We're going to proc a Devour as well because we've got a wave of sounds here. 
And I believe that was the final dunk. So what you, what we need to do here is, uh, is we need to make sure that we're max on heavy, max on special. Or, or, or there too. Plenty of ammo. Um, and we need charge of light. Now we've got a times two. Preferably you, you'd be better off with a times three. You get more damage in that way because high energy fire. So the first plate of damage we're going to get that 20% damage increase. But when we kill the t first two snipers we're going to lose our charge of light. Whereas if we had times three we'll keep that going for a little bit longer. How about just that little bit more. But we start off with um, we've had try and get it double ticking. So what we mean by that is um, one to the body and one on the floor. Now what you want to be doing with this boss fight is getting into a routine. Everyone has their own routine with this fight. You'll watch many videos on this, and everyone has their own little positionings, everything. So you want to come up with a strategy. But the way I do it is as follows: we're using Weaver Horde mainly. Uh, but we're always prioritizing snipers, so we're ahead, we're always ahead of the game to kill them because what's the worst thing is when you're trying to do damage, multitask, and clear the snipers from behind the boss. That's where you're gonna get your wipes. It only takes one little mess one little mistake, you miss a grey launcher shot on a sniper, uh, and then you're screwed. Now this is part of the strap. So my main damage is at the first plate and then at the very last few plates. Because as you saw there, I got a double kill on the snipers, which gives us a, you know, we got taken charge on. That gives us 20% increased damage right now. So for the last three plates, I believe, I'm getting 20% increased damage. And for the first plate. So that's where all my damage is coming from. Not so much in the middle plates, like the middle two. But we're still getting damage because we're constantly multitasking, getting with a hard shots on the boss. So this playstyle, you're constantly getting tick damage in and also if you can get some tick damage if you can get a wither hard shot on just before he leaves the boss will lose my hp now if i'd done everything exactly we would have got closer to nearly half hp but the reason why we didn't is because i didn't have that times three charge of light if i did and i was a bit more patient in the first room we would have got that little bit of extra damage which just but like I said, the, the two phase is going to be required perfect play on this loadout. Um, and that isn't always the case. But like I said, it'll be a comfortable free phase. So we went back there just to look for ammo. Um, and to wait for our devour back, really. Okay, so for the next room, we have... Double light, one dark, I believe it was. But I'm not really too fussed about what moats we're getting. I just want to melt down these knights and these towns. And worry about moats last. Um, just because of how bad the scions can multiply now. If you leave them for just a couple of seconds, even if you just leave one scion up and you've, you've missed a scion, you leave that scion and start doing something else, Next thing you know, you've got a full room of sounds, and then you'll have another wave of sounds because the sounds are an infinite wave. That's another thing. Always prioritize Augus, as, as you can see, and try to only heal and refor them. It's key that you do that. Now we're going to try and get some uh, dark going. We're getting pushed by these knights, so I'm going to proc a devour up here. Just because this room is kind of awkward for the um, dark mods. On the old strat, we used to use Taken Invigoration so we could heal and rift for each knight. Can't do that now. So, gotta, gotta improvise with that. Since we heal and rift before, we don't have a heal and rift for this ogre. So, but we do have a devour. Which is fine. We just devoured at the right time. Get the cell. Take the cell. And it takes out most of the sands. Now we'll get the remaining light, which will kind of weak, so we'll redevour up. Oh, if you're unsure and you, you end up thinking, well, oh, I need my devour for a certain section, in doubt, just devour up. It, it's always worth doing so. Something I've done wrong here, I was thinking, for whatever reason, I was thinking, oh, I need dark. Completely wrong. I think the opposite of what I... I was needing. 
Prime and get the second. As you can see, I'm running out of Prime. That's the thing with this high cost SMG, this particular version. You commonly run out of ammo with it. Uh, I know what it is. Weapon you've seen run out of ammo a lot. That was the final room done, but we are going to want to clear it. Reason being is for ammo purposes, as we don't have much heavy, and obviously we're going to need charge of light. Before we ever do DPS, we want that charge of light, because it just makes things more consistent. You can do it without charge of light, and still probably get a free phase. It's just going to be, you're just making it tighter. You may as well, the adds are on infinite wave, they, they never change that, so that's still a thing. So you can still farm up super. So you used a Nova Bomb and an Ogre, you can farm up super for that. Because uh, you want to make sure you Nova Bomb. I'll try to explain the DB DBS phase each time because there's a lot of stuff going on at once. In terms of what I'm doing. Like, even my Nova Bomb, I'm using that at a specific time. My grenade, I'm using that at a specific time. I'm using my grenade launcher at a specific time. And all this stuff. So we got the time switch charge of light this time. So the DPS should be better this time. So we'll get a we have a hard shot to the floor. We'll get a reload on it because we're going to use it again. Then to the body. Then we swap. We'll do a grenade and then swap to our interference. That's the best damage you'll get there. Then we'll do another we have a hard shot to the body. Keep that tick rate. Then we're going to clear the ads with we have a hard, not primary. Primary is going to be too slow for that section. That way we can jump over his teleports. Um and be safe. We'll jump over that wave if that was coming close to us. Then we'll do a couple more. Again, to the floor and to the body for double tick. I like to melee this particular ad. We get a devour going as well by doing it. Just double melee him. Then if you can do a wither hard shot and then a grade nova bomb right there. Then run. After that, run. Forget doing damage to him. Because right now what we want to do is... Um, get a double kill here the thing is what happened there is that I didn't get my double kill quick enough uh, which I realized was miss missing too many shots so we started off really well for this damage phase but screwed up just on that double kill that's all we done wrong but like I said um, it's still a comfortable free phase on that we're out of heavy but that's fine we can use the uh, wither hard the double tick Also, don't be afraid to use your nade as well, because we can always wait for a nade before we go into that final room. It's worth doing. Obviously, oppressive darkness isn't a thing like what it was when they didn't get out. But, you know, your, your nade's still going to do a bit of damage in combination with what else you're doing. Now, just backtrack for any ammo, always. As you can see, the boss, his health is he's, he's ticking along because the Weaver Hood. Anarchy does the same. If you pre anarchy him before he leaves the room takes more damage primary ammo as you can see is really important if I run out if I run out of primary it's forcing me to have to use way more um, heavy or special so with this weapon for whatever reason it just seems to shred through ammo It's fine if, you, if you're if you entering a room with no heavy, it's fine. As long as you've got some with a hard, just at least a couple of shots to keep you going. Now this is the room where the Scion spawn rate is faster than all the other rooms. And this was a thing last season. It seems to be still a thing this season. The Scion spawn rate seems to be maybe two times the speed or a little bit quicker than the other room. Um... Whether this is intentional, I don't know, but you would have thought they would have looked at it when the dungeon went away. Um, because obviously they've looked at a couple of things. Spawn rate uh, of odd scions. The weird knights react. So they've probably looked at the whole thing. And this is one thing I thought they probably would have looked at, but it doesn't be the case. So the scion spawn, I guess it is a little bit quicker. So this room is the most difficult one. The thing is, if you can get one side of the room clear, because obviously once you clear the ogre, the echo kill, um, one of the echo kills leaves the room. That gives you a third of the room safety, which is huge. Problem with this room, what makes it hard? Two things: scions spawning fast, and that there's little to no light. There's not a lot of light in this room, um, so makes it a bit difficult. 
the thing is, you could wither hard a knight, then run to whatever area you need. So if it's light, you can wither hard him in the dark, then run to the light. One wither hard shot kills a knight, so you get the more top him. Which mountain top takes two shots, so wither hard all, all, already is better than mountain top because he can he can one shot a knight and mountain top can only two shot. Even with taken spec, obviously I didn't use taken spec earlier, uh, as I forgot about it. So this bit was a little bit dicey as we let our ogre go out of control, but it was a little bit too dangerous to go to the knight, go to the ogre at that point. We'll get our cell. What's also very good about that is it's prepping the knights. Uh, when this dungeon first came out on this particular room, I used to want to prep the knights because sometimes you couldn't clear both knights before getting another phase, especially if it was in a bad area. But now you can use the cells to sort of prep knights uh, to get them weak, as like so. So then when, I, when all the signs are killed, you can quickly clear a knight, which is very good that way. So we've got three mots here. We need another three. This is the thing. Knight in an awkward place. So we are going to try to weaver hard this knight and try to get that over to the light, but we didn't get that in time. We have 10 seconds on light mode, so that's a wipe. We reset. At that point, you reset. Um, we're also going to get a wave of sands uh, because we took too long. I'm not sure if I end up getting which I don't. So as you can see, now we're getting more sands. The thing is, though, it's fine. We can, you know, um, get some ammo back. As you see here, I've run out of primary ammo again, which is really bad. So we have to use the necrotic grip. Gotta help us out. So this is one thing I, obviously, I don't like about this SMG. Just the ammo of it. There was ammo to my left there, I didn't see it at the time. But we got a knight here. And we get three mots. And then obviously this knight here spawns in the light location. I'm just gonna melt him down because it's totally worth doing. I wanna try and get this before the next wave of scions at least. It was a lot of heavy on the floor as well, so that's why I used that. Melt that ogre down. We're back up on primary, so we're good for that. And we'll proc a devour, and then what we need to do here is get some double kills with some weapons. So we're trying to do that. There is other mods that I could use, like you can get charged with light if you, if you defeat enemies with a cell, stuff like that. I've got to utilize that. The thing is, with that, is that's not going to work at the boss. When we're trying to get a double kill on them snipers. Um, taking charge works for everything. It ticks the box in this room. Ticks the boss in the boss room. Well. That's where it's just better. Now. We only have times two charge. Times two charge with light. But that's good enough. As you can see the boss is below a third. He's like 25% there. So we're good enough. No matter what. We could have even went in this room without it. But why? When we can. You know. Make things more comfortable. You may as well. Same again, we'll start off with a wither hard and a grenade and then get the double tick going and then interference. Obviously we're never reloading the interference because it's got auto loading, that's the beauty of this loadout. We'll get another wither hard shot and then we're going to do our jump shot jump on these ads while running around the map and also wither hard. As you can see as well, you can get a shot on the wither hard, uh, on the boss sorry, before he leaves, just as he's leaving. Is uh, good. We get our wither shot, then we move on. Same again. Get a devour off this down here. Double melee kill here. Then it's some wither shots, grenade nova, and then run off. The, the, the actually quicker that you run off, the better because what happens is the snipers will do their sort of emote thing, whatever that is. You'll get the orb off them. It just stops them from sniping at you at distance. The, the quick, the closer you are to them, the better. 
but it is urgent and at this point we're just here just to finish like so as you can see from this loadout pretty comfortable to get the solo flawless for the prophecy but that was the run for the warlock hope you enjoyed thank you Pack of taken apart. What the nine are trying to say. Light 